Well, along with gentrification in central Brooklyn, uh, it's become frenzied uh, in the search for acquiring residential and retail property in zip codes once passed over for perceived greener pastures. One of those neighborhoods most deeply affected by this property boom is Bedford-Stuyvesant, of course. And here to tell us about one of the most nefarious aspects of these changes, deed fraud, is New York City Council Member Robert Carnegie Jr. Council Member, welcome back to BK Live. Thank you. It's uh, Happy New Year. It's great Thank to be you. back. I wish it was under these circumstances. But. So right from the outset, which of your constituencies is most affected by deed fraud? Well, I guess the most disproportionately affected would be our seniors, mm -hmm. who are preyed on in all aspects of fraud, but certainly in deed fraud, they seem to be at the, the most targeted. You manage to hold on to that house through the ups and the downs. They get to the golden moment. Absolutely. And somebody sold the house right from under. Right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, a, it's a, a scourge right now that um, it's great to be able to work with um, uh, some great people around stopping it, uh, the Department of Finance um, and NYPD and the, the mayor's office as well as the borough president's office have kind of all combined to really converge on uh, one of the, what I think is, is, is absolutely awful, that we have people who are now sitting at the county clerk's office yeah. trolling deeds mm -hmm. to find, you know, the, the deeds that are registered many, many years ago, which yeah. indicate that it may be possibly a senior mm -hmm. or someone who's not as engaged in the property who may have moved away, yeah. um, right. where there are violations, things like that are, right. are flags for people who are looking to, to commit this nefarious act. Okay, so let's bring in Ayana Robertson, an attorney with the Foreclosure Prevention Project of Brooklyn Legal Services, to tell us about the different types of deed fraud her clients have experienced. So Ayana, what are the top three, let's say, that you're seeing out there? Well, deed fraud really falls into two primary categories. Okay. One would be forgery, and that's outright someone signs your name, it's not really you, and that's how they're transferring the documents. Okay. The other would be deeds transferred by fraud, where the homeowner did actually sign the document, but there was some sort of misrepresentation like or mistake. Like they get caught up in a refinancing thing or right. something? They may have thought they were doing a refinance, and mm -hmm. instead of refinancing or signing documents to refinance, they've actually turned over a deed. Or they may have thought they were going to undertake a short sale, and rather than a short sale, you're signing over the deed to your house. And some homeowners want a modification. They want to make their payments more affordable, and a, a company or an individual will say, this is how you do it, but rather than signing the application, you're signing over your home. Woof. All right, so we've heard uh, we've got a law and order split right now. I want to find out who are these scammers and how actively criminal justice system is pursuing them. So we've invited Sheriff Detective Teresa Russo, who's an investigator with the New York City Department of Finance's Criminal Investigations Unit, and she's here to help us find some answers to that. So who are these bad guys? Well, they work in groups. They could be just simple investors or wannabe investors or just some Sometimes they're just regular people who look for that opportunity, people who prey, as a council member mentioned, uh, they prey on the elderly, quick opportunity to make a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, so we actually have a slide here just to talk about the scale of the thing. I'm going to, like, ask you as our attorney, there's some numbers that were associated with this thing, deed fraud in Bed-Stuy, in your district in particular. So citywide, we can see that the office of the sheriff has received almost 1,600 complaints, yes. and 750 of them, that's the bulk, have been focused right here in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, that's right. So just going down the line there, 97 were accepted by the DA's office. Yes. There's uh, 201 ongoing investigations, and to your credit, at least 20 arrests 20 there. Arrests, yep. Again, 16 for theft in Brooklyn, and yep. we're looking at $22 million worth of market value. That's right. Just really stolen with a few swipes of a pin. So the, the, the old adage that said there's gold in them Nar Hills, there's literally gold in them in our hills. And so you'll see this type of behavior whenever there's a, a huge gain that, that, that can take place. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised based on the escalated value of properties in Brooklyn and, prim and particularly in Bed-Stuy and Crown Heights. Right. So, Ayanna, you were saying earlier that there's the type of fraud in which you might not even know that you have signed away your property in one of these kind of illegitimate um, situations. How? Can you find out if you're a victim or, or what are some steps that you can take to know that somebody is 
is honestly trying to help you with your property or not. Well, Department of Finance has a uh, system whereby you can get notice of recorded documents now, and so we encourage homeowners to sign up for that so that you know if there's been a deed or deed-related documents recorded on your property. Um, in, in terms of if something has already happened to you, then we do a detailed investigation. We will file a notice of rescission with Department of Finance, and that puts the world on notice that there is an issue here with respect to this particular property. And then we investigate you know, whether there are civil claims that we can assert, whether we should turn it over to the DA's office. Sometimes we're doing all of that at the same time. So, Detective, before it gets to that point, are there some sort of telltale signs that someone might be scamming you or things you can do to make yourself the hard target? Absolutely. Um, telltale signs would, um, there's so many, but some of the most popular would be the random phone calls from individuals Just looking to unsolicited. purchase it, unsolicited, mm -hmm. cold visits at the house, mm -hmm. um, offering cash for a key, or if your relatives are calling you and saying, hey, somebody called here looking for you, they want to buy your house. So th those are the most popular. People are just uh, coming to me all the time saying, it started with phone calls numerous phone calls and visits and business cards and yeah. um, so that's certainly one of their ways of uh, making contact with the the person and, and they already seem to know that there may be either some financial distress going on mm -hmm. um, dealing with some uh, estate matters and they get they get uh, so most of the time they've done their homework on you they definitely yeah. have yeah. done their homework mm -hmm. absolutely I, th I think the first level though is the visual where they'll come out there inspecting properties to see if they're in disrepair mm -hmm. yes uh, and those types of things so it, it could be a disrepair for many reasons right. they also check uh, the city's records to see if there's any violations or yeah. a cons considerable amount of violations against a property so there's many levels mm -hmm that they'll yeah. go to. But I think the first is the visual where they come out and, and kind of see kinda whether or not up. mail, whether or not mail backs up. Right. You know, there's a lot of mail, there's a lot of uh, uh, new, uh, there's a lot of growth in the garden, there's a lot of like, like those kinds of things just are triggers. Right. 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 Basically, right. literally but just know from them. living in bed -Stuy that that's like par for the course now. Somebody's always putting a card on your, Absolutely. on your little window or in the mailbox. If you guys want to sell, and some of these are legit people who want to make a buck on the hot market, mm -hmm. but some of them are criminals. Absolutely. And it's unfortunate that what we're finding is that they've gotten even more unscrupulous in terms of sending people who look like the people who are in that community. So whether it's mm. whether speak it's the, your language. They speak your language. Mm. So you really think that it's someone there who, who who's, who's there to help you. So I mean and it's escalated so bad that the market is so hot that it used to be that they would target the seniors. Now they're going after actually commercial establishments, which which is crazy. One of the last ones we saw yeah. was a very prominent person in the area who's a realtor. Uh, and a small business board. owner, right. and a, the chair of the community right. board, with all due respect. And I'm like, really, they're just, they're just, like it's just an all-out worst yeah. target. That right. that, I, that would be the one I out. probably wouldn't pick. Yeah, but How? they actually, um, actually uh, transferred their deed, the deed to his property. Yeah, without without him knowing. How were they targeted? I mean, that's got to be a different approach. Well, on that particular commercial thoroughfare. Uh, everything was bought out except his building. Mm -hmm. So that building probably uh, is, is standing in the way of some, some monstrosity Massive of a development. Yes. And, and they just went, you know, I guess at some point, you just go for it, right? Oh and and they, just, they just went for Goodness. it, to, to their detriment. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, though, that uh, Eric Snyderman actually came to just the just district about to ask about that. Uh, last mm -hmm. week with uh, $60 million worth of resources to, to target and to put into the community to work with nonprofit organizations who do the work on the ground, like Pratt Area Community Council, Bridge Street yeah. Development Corporation, mm -hmm. who are uh, are in the business of education. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think one of the biggest ways to combat it is through education and checking on our seniors and checking on our neighbors and those kinds so of things. So we see the AGs in on it, and he's putting some money where his Absolutely. mouth is. A considerable amount. Where's the mayor and your colleagues in the city council on this issue? So everybody is now kind of waking up to this struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor is committing resources and has said that he would be, he would be on the forefront as well as the borough president. So, you know, when the AG comes to town, you know, a lot of alarms go off, obviously. Okay. Um, and he came understand. He could have he could have gone anywhere in the city to make the statement of his, you know, what the resources were, but he came to Bedford Stuyvesant sure because he knows that he knows that that's the epicenter okay. for this type of uh, nefarious activity okay. at this point.
Well, I'm glad to hear we're getting that kind of protection Absolutely. and that kind of support. Detective, what, can, what else can we do uh, on an individual level to protect ourselves? Right. Um, one of the first things I always encourage is to sign up to receive notification. Just uh, like my bank tells me every time my credit card is used, I get a little ding that says your credit card has been used. Yeah, that's really important wow. because mm -hmm. that, um, that notification alerts the homeowner that a document was, in fact, recorded. And um, that knowledge can limit the amount of harm caused by that fraudulent document. Um, another um, uh, one of the most important things to do, obviously, if you are a victim, is call the sheriff's office and go to your DA's office and let us know right away. Um, we, we do have the uh, ability to put holds on properties if needed so that nothing further happens. Some of these properties have no mortgage, and these people who take these properties quickly move to get a mortgage. And now there's a half a million dollars sitting there. and. Unfortunately, it's up to the homeowner to litigate it civilly. We can't, personally, yeah. I can't, and I wish I could on many levels, go in and reverse the deed. It'd be wonderful to do that for all my victims. But unfortunately, that's a civil matter. It has nothing to do with the criminal component. And they should get a copy of a the certified document that was recorded mm -hmm. and essentially just try to go on. I always encourage them to go on to uh, www.nyc.gov forward slash ACRIS, A C R I S. They can view all documents that have been recorded on their property, and that's really important because if they do notice something that shouldn't be there, is that something quickly I call should us. do like monthly or like every uh, six months, like get know, into a it, rhythm? It, of it all takes maybe three minutes of your time. Okay. If you're capable of doing it monthly, great. If not, so every I mean, time you pay your mortgage or something, yeah, my, why, not? why not? Stop by Acris. There. Well, actually, if you register with the Acris system, oh, they right. did. It, it will. It will. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't know if it's a ding. We're working on pushing. I want a ding. Yeah. Get us. We're working, on, we're working on a push notification that would do that, but what happens is uh, if you if you register, they'll let you know if someone is making any movements on your deed. So the, the first thing I do is I'm encouraging. And it's difficult with seniors because they're not right. sometimes so technology right. savvy. Right. But that's the first thing you have to do. Everybody in the city of New York should register your deed with right. the with the Acris right. system okay. immediately. That's immediately. Easy. But ironically, some right people don't register and. They know about it, but they don't, and they just prefer to keep checking. Yeah. Why? It's their preference. I don't know. So that's news you can use. Ayana, mm -hmm. give us another gym before you mm -hmm. get out of here. If you've been a victim, if you think you may be, whatever you can do to help someone be informed about deed theft. There are two places where I would suggest you go. One is agscamhelp.com, and that's where you can fill out a form and give the AG essentially all of the information that you have about whoever this scammer is, gotcha. and they will do an investigation. Also, you can call 311 to be connected to housing counselors or free legal services, such as my organization, Brooklyn Legal Services, and we will do a lot of that legwork for you and connect you to the right people. Big shout, big shout out to Brooklyn Legal Services. <laughs> <laughs> also, report those, report those phone numbers. I feel like yeah. I've recently been getting a lot of those weird calls, and then I go you on to BBB. I know, right? <laughs> Stop calling me. <laughs> yeah, well, but I get them anyway. The sheriff's office likes to collect intelligence, so if people do get business cards yeah. or cold calls or cold visits, we, we oh, welcome pardon. those phone calls because we do gather this intelligence. We have names of groups that work together, yeah. entities that are shell corps, but there's always the same members, and back. you know. Mm -hmm. it's All a right, in our last and seconds take us home uh, again I think everybody's got to register with the accurate system and realize that there are resources available a lot of this happens mm -hmm. because people are embarrassed or they're, they're, or they're fearful or they feel right. al feel alone yeah. don't be ashamed if you feel as though you're being scammed if you know if your spidey senses start yeah. tingling mm -hmm. you should you should reach out and and reaching out to Brooklyn legal services reaching out to my office reaching out to sheriff's office there are resources available mm -hmm. that had operated individually but now we're operating collectively All right. so so please Please don't be ashamed if you feel as though there's a scam in place. Brooklyn's right. own Justice League fault. is going to keep you in your home. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it.